a bunch of credits. Unlike when we looked at the uh, accounts receivable where we had debits and credits over here. The balance sheet of a, account of accounts receivable is a debit normal balance account, but we'll have credit transactions, the credit transactions reducing the account balance, the debit transactions increasing the account balance. On the revenue side, it's a credit normal balance account and therefore credits increase, debits would decrease, but typically we won't see any debits because revenue only goes up, customers only pay us, we do not typically pay customers. What will the transaction be? It will usually be debiting accounts receivable, crediting revenue. If we're in the type of company that invoices clients, meaning we do work, then we invoice the client and expecting an IOU, expecting uh, money, a check in the mail from the customer in the future. So you'll note that all these transactions related to the increase in revenue are a debit to receivable, credit to revenue. The second piece of that being the accounts receivable uh, going down and the cash then being received. If we take a look at the next step then, that step, the creation of the trial balance. So we have just a small trial balance here because the general ledger can be overwhelming. Clearly, if we're looking at a fairly extensive problem or a extensive company, this GL will be very large. It could be a very extensive GL. And especially if we're looking for an entire year worth of data, we're, we're looking at only a few transactions here. If we're talking about a year's worth of data, then especially the cash account and the receivable account and say the revenue account could be pages long. So just keep that in mind that we're kind of simplifying the data here, but the essence is the same. If you look at an extended, messy, huge general ledger, all you're looking for are those ending balances when constructing the trial balance. We're just pulling those ending balances here. In this case, those being cash being pulled over from the GL to the trial balance at 13,650, the accounts receivable being pulled over at 780 from the GL to the accounts receivable, nothing in supplies, nothing in accounts payable, nothing in owner's capital at this point, and revenue is that credit of 14,430 being pulled over to the trial balance at 14,430, nothing in the wages expense or utilities expense at this time. And therefore, it's going to be easiest for us to see on the trial balance. One of the reasons for pulling these balances to a trial balance is that it's easy to see that the debits then should equal the credits. Once we pull all this data over, then if we were to add up the debits, the 13,650 and the 780, we would be equaling the credit of 14,430. And therefore, if we were to subtract the two out, we would have a zero balance. We can also calculate net income easily. In this case, that just the 14,430 revenue minus expenses. Us at this point only having revenue of 14,430 and no expenses. Remember the sequence. If you were to add to get a question as how does this happen in order, we have the journal entries. The journal entries are then posted to the general ledger. The general ledger then we're taking these ending balances to create the trial balance. The trial balance will then be adjusted at the adjusted trial balance, but will ultimately be used to create the end product of the financial accounting, those being the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, statement of equity. Objectives, we are now able to define the general ledger, list components of the general ledger, and explain how the general ledger is used.